Calling all hot messes. Does that sound like you? Do you secretly call yourself a hot mess inside of your head? Well, you're not alone. And today I thought I would do a little deep dive into the feelings we all have about being a secret hot mess. Basically today I'm giving you the tools to go from hot mess express to hot mess success. So if that sounds like you, then be sure to keep watching. What's up my friend? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jen Stevens. I am a spiritual life and business coach and this is my YouTube channel. This is where I create a brand new training video for you each and every week, all designed to help you transform your life from the inside out. So the two favorite things that I talk about here are mindset and manifestation, and I'm giving you tons of practical tips on how to uplevel your mind so you can uplevel your life. So if that sounds like something you want to be a part of, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. How many times have you thought this to yourself? Oh my God, I am such a hot mess. Whenever you make a mistake in your life, whenever things start to go wrong, it can be really easy to start to call yourself this kind of name in your head. Even if you're not actually using the words hot mess, you probably have some way of describing yourself that isn't so flattering. So I know that I have heard some very successful people talk about their hot mess side, and I know that this is something that is just a matter of perspective. Like everything in our head, it does not have to be a bad thing, and in fact, it isn't a bad thing at all. And all the stories you have about why you're a hot mess probably aren't even true in the first place. So the reason why I want to talk about this today is because our perception of ourselves and our identity is so important to our results. So if you're basically walking around in the world thinking I'm such a hot mess, it's amazing I get anything done, then that's the result that you're going to create. It's going to be amazing that you get anything done. So it's really not a helpful way to look at ourselves and we don't actually have to change our hot mess behavior in order to shift things. What we really need to do is start to shift our story about ourselves, our identity about ourselves, and to start to give ourselves permission to be imperfect on the way to achieving the results that we want. This is just a reminder that perfection doesn't exist. And in this video, I'm going to give you a bunch of tips to help you get on the other side of this very low vibe way of thinking. The most important thing that I want you to take away from this whole video today is the fact that you are still allowed to create a successful life. You are allowed to have business success, relationship success, financial success. You can have success in every area while also not having everything 100% figured out. So this is a big problem for so many of us and I think especially for women, I think women especially look down on ourselves and opt out of many things because we think we're too messy or we're too scattered or we're too unorganized or whatever the thinking might be. So I just want to give you some of that power back today and to start to shift the way you perceive yourself. Like I said, perception is everything. And if you can start to give yourself permission to be a little bit messy while you do the things that really matter, that will make such a big difference to your result. So there's three main points I want to make today about how you can be a hot mess success. And the first point I want to talk about today is battling imposter syndrome. So this is the one that I see probably the most often out there. I still see very successful people out there who refer to themselves as a hot mess. And again, I'm just using that term as a simple way to phrase this, but it could be any of the ways your inner mean guy or inner mean girl talks about you. That downplays your competency and makes it seem like there's no possible way you should be deserving the success that you have right now. Imposter syndrome is that feeling that we all experience sometimes where we think that if people just really knew the truth about us, there's no way that we would be allowed to be who we really are. So again, this is just a mindset problem. It has nothing to do with the actual facts of the world and everything to do with the way you think about yourself. When you are suffering from imposter syndrome, you feel like you just barely made it past the finish line, or perhaps you think that if people knew the truth about you, they wouldn't like you or respect you so much, 
or perhaps you think that you just made it to some sort of level in a job or maybe a money level and you think that there's no possible way you really deserve your success and that at any moment it's going to be taken away from you. I think we have all experienced imposter syndrome at one point in time, but like I just said, it is just a matter of your mindset. It has actually nothing to do with your reality. I find it really interesting how we are all so much more susceptible to thinking thinking terrible things about ourselves than we are to talking ourselves up and to believing in our own success stories. But I know if you have just created a massive shift in your life, if you, you know, got a big job promotion or you made a bunch of money suddenly, you might be experiencing imposter syndrome just because it all happened so fast. So part of you is in the new reality that you have created, that you went after, that you manifested. And part of you is still living in the past and still thinking that there's no possible way this could be real. So this creates tension. It doesn't feel good. It makes us feel a little bit extra stressed because we really do spend time in our day wondering if someone's gonna take this away or if they're gonna find us out and what's going to happen if that day comes. If you are resonating with imposter syndrome or if imposter syndrome is making you feel like a hot mess, I just want you to really take a step back and to start to look at the facts of the situation. Again, I think it is way easier for us women to downplay our success stories, but really this syndrome can happen to anybody. But if this is happening to you, I really want you to stop dwelling on the what ifs or if people found out this then. Like you need to stop thinking all of those kinds of thoughts because those thoughts are so disempowering. They're really just taking you away from what has actually conspired in your life. So that is what I want you to shift your attention back to. If you just got a job promotion, Try to go back and remember why you got promoted. Remember what the circumstances were. Remember what people told you. Remember the successes you had at your previous position. You need to focus on that in this in-between stage. So that's a really good example, actually, getting a new job. When you get a promotion, usually there's a bunch of new things that go along with that. So you probably went from feeling very comfortable and very safe to feeling a bit out of your element and like you don't know what's going to happen. And of course, that is exactly what's going on. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. You are doing something completely brand new. So when you're in that state, that might knock you off of your confidence, that might make you think you're a hot mess, that might make you think that you don't really deserve to be there, but you have to remember that this is just a temporary experience. You are in the process of growing into this next level of you. And of course, you are going to spend some time learning the ropes, learning new concepts, learning how to create this new skill set that is going to match this job. It's going to take a little bit of time before you get to the same level of comfort that you had at your last position. But that does not mean that you are not competent. That does not mean that you are a hot mess express. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything about your skill set other than the fact that you are just not that practiced at it. So I want you to remember that that is perfectly okay. It is okay to be in process. It is okay to be in learning. It is okay to be practicing a skill and not have quite mastered it yet. That does not mean anything about you other than the fact that you are in motion. The same thing applies to relationships or money or to whatever else has happened in your life. If you are settling into a new romance and feeling like this person isn't going to love me if they really knew who I was, well, it's time to unpack that and to remember that you didn't deceive this person, at least hopefully, <laughs> into falling in love with you and that there is something about you that, that has created this romance. You really need to start to learn how to give yourself credit and I know that your brain does not want to do that automatically. So if you are feeling this, I would recommend writing down some of your wins in the past, some of the reasons why you got the job, some of the reasons why you think your partner was attracted to you, whatever those things are, and just come back to that over and over again. Read it in the morning, read it at night, and try to feed your brain this more solid diet of information about itself so that it doesn't go to the crazy place of 
this can't possibly be real. I don't deserve to be here. I'm such a mess. I don't deserve this. That is not a fun place as we already established. So it is just important for you to create a game plan to take you back to feeling more confident and remembering all the amazing things that you've done. You can only hold one thought at a time. You literally can't stress out about all these unknowns in your new life as well as focusing on the things that you have done in the past. You have to pick a direction. That's why I recommend balancing out the crazy thoughts with a solid group of reminders about why you deserve to be where you are and why you are not a hot mess. Okay, the second point I want to make today about how to be a hot mess success. This one is all about perfectionism, which is another thing that so many of us have struggled with at one point in time or another. Perfectionism really just robs us of the opportunity to feel happy, to feel confident, to feel anything good in the current moment. Perfectionism boosts the bar up so high that we can never quite reach it, but keeps us feeling like we are almost there, almost there, almost there. We can almost relax. And we will almost be successful. We will almost be lovable, but it keeps that thing just out of reach all of the time. So where this comes into play with this sort of hot mess feeling that we all get from time to time is that anytime you might make a mistake or, you know, might be taking you longer to learn something, or maybe you did actually mess something up, you know, our brain can be really hard on us and it can look at this mistake or look at this misjudgment as evidence that we are not who we say we are as evidence that we do not deserve this or as evidence that we will never be able to create what we want or learn this thing or complete that task. Our brain it can really be horrible to us and I've talked about our inner mean guy and our inner mean girl in a bunch of other videos but this is just basically our inner critic and our inner critic really just knows how to push our buttons in the most horrible way. <laughs> That's because it really is just your brain at work. It is the fear-based lizard portion of your brain that really just wants to keep you safe and sound, which it thinks means not doing anything new ever. So what better way to trick you into not doing anything new ever is by telling you that anytime you make a mistake when you're trying something new, that that is evidence that you should not be here for whatever reason. So that is a real way that perfectionism can get in our way, really feed this idea that we are a hot mess and prevent us from continuing in the direction we want to go. So the thing I really want you to understand for this perfectionist tendency is just to really remind yourself that you are allowed to make mistakes. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but even Beyonce has made mistakes. We have to remind ourselves that very successful people, people that have created billion dollar businesses, people that have become really famous, people that have started from scratch and built a business by themselves, all of these things that we look up to in the world, we have to remember that the road to getting there was not just this fun road without any bumps in it. There was definitely bumps in the road. There were twists and turns and there were definitely mistakes made along the way. But that does not mean that the success at the end of the line was not meant for that person. But our brain likes to tell us this when it comes to us or it likes to tell us that if we get this part wrong that that's a sign we should do something else or we should try again tomorrow or next month or next year. All of those stories though are actually just preventing you from really leaning in and figuring things out, um, getting past the mistake and getting to the other side. Buying in to perfectionist thinking is going to stifle your dreams, is going to make you second guess everything to the point where your brain wins the war and you just sit at home doing nothing. With every new dream, with every idea that you want to manifest for yourself, you have to realize you will be going out and forging new ground and doing new things and becoming a better version of you. But you've got to crack a few eggs to make that omelet, as they say, and there will be some times where something doesn't quite go the way you expected it to. The thing about that is there aren't really any failures in this world. There's just a way of doing things that doesn't work. And if you look at it the right way, you can just take the information that you learned from this incident and you can take that and apply it and go from there. It does not have to be a stop sign. It does not have to prevent you from moving forward. Failure being a negative thing is just another way our brain gets in our 
way, and I, I'm not going to go into that right now, but these are all just stories we tell ourselves. And you can get to flip the story into something that is empowering and challenges you to keep moving forward, or you can let the story stop you in your tracks. If you believe that you are a hot mess and you believe that every little mistake you make is evidence that you are such a hot mess that you shouldn't be doing this or that you don't deserve it or that you're never going to be smart enough, that is a quick way to sabotage even your best intentions. So it is really important to understand this, to be okay with failure, and to understand that perfectionism is not required. <laughs> Thank goodness, because if it was, literally none of us would have anything that we wanted. So it is okay to go out there, make the mistakes, fall on your face, as long as you pick yourself up and keep going and don't make a big story out of it does not mean you are a hot mess. <laughs> okay, the third point I wanted to talk about today when it comes to being a hot mess, success. This is getting rid of our ideas about learned helplessness, which is something that so many of us have. I know maybe when I say learned helplessness, you're probably like, what does that mean? That doesn't sound like anything that I relate to. But subconsciously, many of us do fall into this trap and we can make it mean a lot about ourselves it can create a bunch more evidence about how we are a hot mess. What I'm really talking about right now is the sort of social conditioning that happened to us mostly during the school system. So when you go to school, when you're a kid, you go to class, you do assignments, you get a grade, and then you get permission to go on to the next grade. There's always somebody that's there that is looking at your work, telling you whether you're measuring up or not, and giving you permission to go to the next level. <laughs> so we are used to somebody being in charge of where we are going next. The thing is, when we graduate and when we go out into the real world, there is nobody checking on us in that way, and there is definitely nobody in charge of our success. I guarantee that if you put your entire career's success into the hands of one person who is your manager, that person would never probably push you as far as you could go. It is up to you, my friend, to advance your life. It is up to you to give yourself permission to go to the next level. And there is nobody there that is going to be like, hey, your grades are really good. You know, you should apply to this amazing school. You are going to have to be the person that does that in every level of your life. And that is a really big difference in thinking than what we were conditioned to believe. I know I can relate to having this happen in my life and maybe you can too. But the sooner that you can really step in and start to take responsibility for your life, realize that you're the only one in charge and that you get to make all the shots, that is one of the best decisions you can ever make for yourself. But this conditioning runs really deep and we have been taught to think this way for so many years that you might be secretly waiting for someone to give you the sign. You might be secretly waiting for someone to say like, you are doing really great at your job. Maybe it is time for you to apply for this promotion or for this job at this other company. You might be waiting for permission for somebody to tell you that you look good and that you should just go out there and start dating people instead of being at home feeling terrible about yourself all the time. Like it is amazing how often we are buying into these weird little stories that don't really make sense in the real world, but make perfect sense in our weird little mind. This line of conditioning is so strong, you might believe that because no one is coming after you and giving you a gold star or telling you to go to the next level that you don't deserve it. You might be thinking that because no one is there, that you must be a hot mess. And I really just want you to start to question that in yourself. If you develop this learned helplessness, if you are waiting for outside approval, if you are waiting for someone to give you a sign to start the business, to apply for the job, to do the things that you really want to do, it is time to remember that the only permission slip you need now is your own. It would be great if other people in our world could show up and cheer us on exactly when we need them to. But unfortunately, that is just not the way that life works. And the really good thing about that is that we don't actually need them anyways. All we really need is ourselves. All we really need is our own permission. And the faster we can learn how to give that to ourselves, the better. You do not need a permission slip to not be a hot mess express. It does not matter what anyone else thinks about your life. It doesn't even matter if they're thinking about you or not. 
All you need is yourself. And again, looking to other people for any validation or for any permission is always going to be a losing proposition. So if you can feel a little bit resonation with this, it is really time for you to think about how you can give yourself that permission slip. What do you really want someone to come and tell you right now? What is the permission you have been waiting for? What is the validation you have been craving? And then really go out there and give that to yourself because you are going to cut to the chase. You're going to cut down on the time it takes you to do something and you are going to go out there and do it to yourself. And really that is the only thing you've ever needed this whole entire time anyway. Plus, the more you work on this, the better your self-trust gets. And the better your self-trust gets, the better your life gets. So it's time to opt out of waiting for permission, compliments, validation, whatever you're looking for, and to start to lean into you. So that is it for my tips for you today. But I really hope you take these to heart and I hope you apply them in your own life. Do the mindset work to take yourself from hot mess express to hot mess success. We are allowed to be works in progress. We are allowed to not have it all figured out and we are allowed to make mistakes along the way. If you can learn how to be completely okay with all of these things, you will become unstoppable. At the end of the day, it's really only our mindset that is getting in our way. Our mindset and our beliefs and our self identity are our biggest blocks. So you need to stop conceiving of yourself as a hot mess, or at least giving yourself permission to be a hot mess while you still do the things that you really want to do. Hot mess success, my friends, that is the key to your abundant future. That's the key to my abundant future as well. So I hope that you enjoyed this video today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for hanging out here with me. I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please do me a favor, hit the like button. If you wanna learn more, you can come on over and join me in my brand new monthly membership program called Recode. That is where I'm giving you the tools to help rewire your mind, for manifestation success, for you to be a happier and healthier human. And I am really so proud of it. So come on over and check that out if you're interested. Other than that, I'll be back here in next week's episode. So until then, I'm wishing you the most badass week ever. And as always, just remember, get ready for the miracle. See you guys.